Okay. Um, hi, everyone. The Zoom presentation will be recorded and uploaded to the museum's YouTube account following the presentation. If you do not want your image or video visible, feel free to stop your video now. I've muted everyone to begin with, so please keep your video muted until the end of the presentation. And welcome to Peoria Riverfront Museum's Art Club, and thank you for joining. I'm Angela Drock, Museum Educator and Programs Coordinator, and I'm delighted to be hosting Jackie Music's music for today's Art Club presentation. Um, questions and comments are welcome to the end of the presentation. At that time, I'll invite you to unmute yourself, or alternatively, if you don't wish to talk, I'd invite you to type that question into the comment section, and I'll ask that question for you. Let me introduce today's artist. Jackie is a self-taught female identifying artist who uses acrylic paint, fabric, thread, mixed media, poetry, watercolor, latex paint, found objects, canvas, brushes, and her imagination. Her work focuses on themes of infertility, depression, anxiety, human connection, play, and self-love. She has shown work in both group and solo exhibitions throughout the Peoria region, including the Peoria Public Library, Illinois Central College, and more. In 2020, she was selected as a Sky Art Peoria finalist. So please give a warm welcome to Jackie Music. Hi, thank you. I'm very excited to be here. Um, let's <laughs> hold on a second. Hi, <laughs> I'm very excited to be here today. Um, my dog is sitting next to me, Ellie, and I need to introduce her as well because she's just as much a part of this. And she is uh, curious why I'm talking and not petting her. <laughs> so, um, hello, thank you for taking time out of your day. We're gonna do a presentation now, Ellie, okay? Um, I appreciate you being here. So we're gonna get started. I prepared a slideshow. I tried my best to get all of the things in, um, but I do a lot of different stuff. So let's get started and um, yeah, let's get started. Oh, I need to share my screen. Huh? <laughs> I am one of those people who um, I have no problem laughing at myself or doing things a little bit uh, clumsy <laughs> because uh, that's just a good reminder that I am human. I am not a robot or a machine. I'm just a person trying to do my best. So here we go, sharing screen now. <laughs> Hey. Hi, thank you for joining today. I am going to try and speak as clearly and concisely as I can, but I have so much to say and I tend to be a little wordy. So I pre-recorded some of my slides to help myself. Enjoy. <laughs> Early on, I started painting as a way to cope and navigate my own infertility journey. And it was an instrumental part in healing and just really moving through that time. One of the pieces that I made was this one here called Little Ones embryos. And that was something I finished before my first art exhibit that was in October 2016, um, in which I shared my healing collection, all those pieces that I had created during that time. After my first art exhibit, I decided to work on a project where I would gift paintings to other couples, other families going through infertility or who had gone through infertility to give them a tangible representation of that journey. And that's what this series is. So 
The next step for me was getting a studio. I had been using a spare bedroom in our home and something that really made me feel a little bit closer to the community and a little bit more legitimate in my art practice was having a studio. I can honestly say that My experience as an artist has been one giant step in believing in myself over and over again. <laughs> over time, I started moving away from the subjects of infertility and painting for others for infertility. And I just started exploring and trying things that made me feel excited or curious. Oftentimes, I would come back to painting my emotions or things that related to my mental health. But I also spent a lot of time experimenting. So this is um, just a compilation of some of the photographs that I took over those years at my first studio space. Um, I do a lot of sharing on social media. And early on, I would do these screen recordings of painting. I would do a lot of live videos. And I really spend a lot of time just having fun. <laughs> enjoying the work. I also submitted poetry to Lit on Fires. Um, they have a, a magazine, a zine, that was published pretty regularly, and I have a few pieces of poetry in there. Like I said, this is kind of going fast. We'll cover questions at the end, but he just, I work well with visuals. So I put a bunch of visuals in here for you. So some of the marks that you see that I make, um, when I work abstract, I'm not, starting out with a plan necessarily. I am not um, having a vision when I begin my paintings. I just grab some paint and start working. Um, it's very organic, it's very intuitive, and I always approach my art with a playful, a playfulness. Okay, <clears throat> so that's that slide. <laughs> so let's talk about some of the things that happened. Um, I participated I in- I really embraced myself oh. as- Hold on, Jackie. An artist. <laughs> um, I have done several different things and it's not in chronological order. It was just whatever I could find that was available in my um, photo bank <laughs> in the computer. But I have done sculpture walk, peace poles. Oh gosh, see, I'm not a, I don't present enough. Duh, something just happened. Hold on. Okay, there we go. We're gonna go back. Okay, um, the peace poles, I did spoken word performance and um, murals throughout town. I probably am repeating myself a little bit, so let's see what I had pre-recorded. Pre Once I really embraced myself as truly an artist, I began getting more involved in the arts community and volunteering. I also did a spoken word performance at Ignite Peoria several years in a row. 
I also painted some murals around town. Okay. And we're gonna watch just a little bit of this video here. I have to skip ahead a little bit. to paint your story. Um, it's a special style and I'll explain the process, but I just wanted to get on and say hi and tell you how much I think you're amazing. So Merry Christmas. Well, it all starts by me reading your story. I had to get connected to you. I went through your Facebook, Every Breath Counts with Rebecca page and I read all of it. These were some of the notes that I took while reading through your story. Next, I divided up different themes by color and I decided what would be relevant to your story and how it would look translated into different colors. So this is a point where um, the storytelling series that I used for the infertility couples um, translated into a different type of storytelling. And I created this piece for um, a young lady who was about to have a double lung transplant. So this is her tangible um, piece of art that represents that time period. And I hope that you see the beauty that comes through of a life lived fully. Now we see the coral added in towards the very end, representing your donor lungs, the life that you are starting new and fresh, the journey that's yet to happen. Um, moving on from there, I also participated in Love Wall Peoria with several other local artists. Um, we painted the alleyway near One World. It's the One World building, and this is the piece that I was responsible for. Um, I worked with Jessica McGee, Alec De Jesus, Chelsea Tams did the design for one of the murals, and May, I'm gonna say her last name wrong, so I'm not gonna even say it, but our, the wonderful and talented, amazing May was also part of that team helping um, with us. There was an adventure mural inside Bush Baby, which is, it's no longer there, um, which is kind of sad, but that is the nature of life, right? Things don't last forever. And part of my art practice is acknowledging the fact that, um, you know, things change, things are temporary. And um, I do my best to explore and enjoy and um, experience what I can with the amount of time that I have. And um, I know nothing is too precious in my art practice. I know that things can get broken or painted over or lost, um, but that is not the end goal. I'm not working to have um, a storage unit full of paintings, which I currently have a storage unit full of paintings. Um, but it's not my, 
it's not my intention to hold on to all of those. I like to um, see the evolution of the work. So that kind of naturally leads to my old studio. I painted the door every time I was there and had extra paint. I don't like paint to go to waste. So I would just keep adding to my door. And then at the beginning of my second year in the studio, I completely covered that and started over again. And now that door came with me to my new studio and um, it kind of acts as a room divider. Um, and it hasn't been painted on since, but I loved that idea of every time you came in, it was a little bit different. Um, I've also started doing abstract embroidery. As in I continue to explore different mediums. One of the things that came about was my abstract embroidery series. Okay, okay. I guess I can't remember all the ones I put sound in and the sound button is so hard to see. So forgive me if I interrupt myself over and over again. Um, I have done art journals, Instagram lives, Instagram um, engagement on social media platforms, and then also projects. Um, I did a 30-day painting project. I did projects where I would restrict myself with my color palette and projects where I would explore different shapes. But over time, I kept seeing similar patterns come out in my work. Um, and I started to see it as sort of my, my uh, alphabet for painting. There are certain themes that come about. And in my mind, I've sort of um, assigned them meaning based on either where they showed up in my paintings, what was going on in my life during that time, or what they um, went on to mean. And I can explain those a little bit more. But one of the things about the 81 day project, which is so silly, who has an 81 day project? Um, I did because I started as a hundred day project and about 70 days in, it occurred to me that I needed to order new, more little canvases. And um, those canvases were expensive and I didn't have a lot of extra income at the time. I tried to keep my art business, my art practice, um, self-sufficient, self-running. So it, it came down to, okay, do I really need to do a hundred day project? Like who is this hundred day project for? Why did I do it? And I assessed all the different reasons why I wanted to do it. I needed some social media content. I needed, um, to just have something playful. I also wanted to have, um, some sort of consistency. So it was a forced activity that I had to do every day. And um, I was successful. Like it had done what I needed to do at that point. And I realized it didn't really have to be a hundred day project. It didn't have to be a 365 day project. It could be whatever I chose it to be. So that's when it became the 81 day project. <laughs> I participated in a few events. This one was at the Riverfront Museum um, where Chelsea Tams had put together an event and it was it was really a fantastic event. I, I don't often do um, markets because um, as you can see from this picture, I go a little overboard. I can't restrain myself. Uh, I kind of just throw everything in and I have a lot of stuff. So I know that sometimes when people visit my studio spaces or they see my work, they're just sort of like ping pong balls. Like what, where do I look next? Um, but that is, that is me. That is uh, the way my art comes out. So I have a line of jewelry that I created because in my first studio, we would have 
first Fridays and often I would notice that most people would kind of be a little bit shy about coming into the art studio, but they would be walking around carrying bags of jewelry they bought from some of the other artists and the jewelry spaces. And I was like, okay, how do I trick people into buying art? <laughs> um, and I had all of this material because when I paint or when I practice, or anytime I have a brush out, I'm probably creating five times more than I actually really need to be creating. Um, so I had a lot of waste material or scrap paintings that I ended up cutting up. So all of the art in these earrings that you see are original pieces of larger mm. artworks. Okay, my dog is whining at me. We didn't plan ahead for her. Um, she just wants to be on the screen. Okay, so those pieces are embedded into the jewelry. Um, they're all one of a kind and it's, it's really, really fun to make. Um, and it's even more fun to see people wearing it out in the, out in the wild is what I, what I like to say. <laughs> This piece is a collaboration between myself and Jessica Bingham Ott. We were in a two-person, uh, she was invited to be a part of a group exhibition and you had to pick someone to collaborate with and she asked me to collaborate with her and this is what we came up with. So. Um, we took some of my embroidery and painting and took it out of the hoop and um, then we brought in some of her raw canvas and it just sort of turned into this mending project and it was very much the beginning of our um, our friendship too, which is really nice. In the summer of 2019, I moved into a new studio at what would later become North Art Studios. When I moved in, there was just a few other artists in the St. Paul's Episcopal Church building. We have taken over their empty spaces and it is just a wonderful experience to have um, this studio. I am forever grateful for the space and my wonderful studio mates who are just beyond the window wall. <laughs> oop, oop, oop. Um, this is a few more collaboration projects. Um, Again, I didn't include everything, but I want to showcase um, some of the things that you might not be aware of. I worked with Jeremy Berkeley on this um, poster, this political poster for Peter Kobach when he was running for, for city council. Also, I was a part of a group um, who did the terrain biannual and Natalie, I'm going to mess up her, you know, I should have practiced last names. Um, Natalia, I'm not even getting first names right. Natalia put all of this group together and each of us um, painted a little wood board to cover one of the windows at the bottom of the Hale Memorial Church. Um, I've also been a participant in the Emerging Artists Collective for several years. And for many of those years, I was on the admin team for that. I also collaborated with Barbie Perry. In early 2020, we taught a class of OLLI students, which are lifelong learners. They were fantastic to work with. And we basically just gave them materials and an idea and really had them um, 
interject their own um, creativity to the process. And it was wonderful. It was very exciting. It also opened a door for us to be able to speak at a Bradley class and talk about the experience. And it really started a wonderful relationship with the Peoria Public Library. So that exhibit, which was called Mollifying Edges, um, it hung in the library early 2020. And that was actually the last opening event that I was able to attend before we all shut down. So, um, and also, some of the students in this class have gone on to become friends. <laughs> um, and specifically, one, uh, Lauren Nelson, up in the top right, she is always dropping off art supplies from her aunt, who was an artist. So it's, it's just wonderful to see it come full circle um, and have her aunt's materials come into my studio and then be shared with other artists as well. I have provided a play workshop. So my career before I pursued art was teaching preschool. And I taught that for several years. And one of the things that I wanted to bring to Peoria was a workshop that was different than um, your typical workshops that you see. The paint nights are very fun but I just didn't have, I didn't feel like it was something that I wanted to contribute to. I wanted to provide something completely different. So my play workshops are run like a preschool class and there's imagination and there's make-believe play. And um, it is a lot of fun. We have kind of taken a pause from those, but I, hopefully those will return in the future. Um, in preparing for this, my husband asked. Time, so most of the time, what my subject matter is, chooses me. It's kind of odd to explain it, but I approach my art process in a very informal way. It's what works best for me most of the time until it doesn't. And then in those times, usually there is something I'm already curious about or there's a direction that's already clear. This is how I work now, but in the past, it wasn't always that way. So this is is where we're at now. I just had a show come down from the Peoria Public Library and it was a compilation of all the work that I've been doing for the last five years. So I wanted to have this exhibit in 2020, um, but that didn't happen. So we kind of did a little pivot and it happened in October of 2021. And I'm just going to play the video of some of those images. Oh, get back here. So you'll see some new things that popped up are these sculptures, which I call my hug friends. And I collaborated with many friends to create stories and whole backgrounds for these sculptures. And those are moving on to have their own life outside of an art gallery. Is that the last one? Okay. So what does the future hold? Um, these are some older pictures, but it's a pretty good representation of what I would like to continue to do and some of the surprising things that I have up my sleeve. I have worked with Big Picture Peoria to teach mural classes to children 
Um, it is very rewarding and fun to be able to do that. There are portrait embroideries that I've been doing and those have been really fun. I only have a few slots for those a year and um, I included the donkey one because that is someone's pet donkey and that is what she ordered for her mom for Christmas and I just think it's hilarious. <laughs> um, over to the right of the screen you see me with my sky art Peoria miniature billboard and let me tell you that was such an exciting um, moment. Um, that is such a huge program in our community and it has been so incredible to be a part of it. I also hope to continue to sell my work. Uh, one of the coolest things that I hear often is that my work is the first artwork that someone has purchased, the first official artwork. And um, that is a very special feeling to know that someone was dr drawn enough to my piece and then decided to invest in it. Um, so that's very exciting. I also have a line of stickers with my embroidery. And there is a wonderful little miniature puppet there, um, a miniature version of myself. And that is a big part of the future. So I'm going to close out my slideshow and uh, stop sharing and come back to you. So let's check the time. You're doing great on time, Jackie. Thank you. Awesome. I kind of... Which is uh, great because um, now we can open it up to questions. So yes. if you have a question or a comment for Jackie, feel free to unmute yourself. Or if um, you prefer, you can type that into the chat box and I will, um, we will take a look at that. So, and Jackie, that's the first um, four-legged friend who's made an appearance at Art Club. And Jackie also recently um, celebrated a birthday. So happy belated birthday, Jackie. <laughs> Thank you. I guess um, I'll, I have a question for you actually, Jackie. I, um, I have visited the Frida Kahlo exhibit um, this summer at College of DuPage and she also assigned emotions to colors um, in the same way you did. So I'm, Curious as to how you came about with that and how that's um, influenced your work or do you, do you infuse that through all of your artwork or could you tell a little bit more about that? Yeah, so that's something that I really only use in my storytelling paintings. Um, I don't necessarily see it in all of my work, but when I am doing the storytelling paintings, the way that it works is I send a a full survey to whoever is commissioning the piece. And it, it has a lot of emotional detail. It has a lot of um, specifics. And while I'm reading through that, certain colors just sort of arrive in my head. <laughs> um, again, it's all very intuitively based. I do also ask if there are colors that they associate with anything. And oftentimes uh, people clearly have. Um, I know one couple in the Through Infertility series, um, they associated red with heartbreak and they associated black with pain and yellow and pink with hope. So sometimes there was something to go off of from the people that I was creating the piece for. And then sometimes it was really just um, kind of my own direction there. I don't have any um, questions in the chat box. 
Um, okay. Allison did comment that it was clever to make original jewelry, which I agree. <laughs> Um, I think that's a wonderful way to repurpose it and share it in a different way for people to enjoy. So I thought it was beautiful. So, um, and yeah. if no one has any further questions or comments or I don't oh. see, oh, go ahead, Jackie. I, so, I have, still have stuff. I just didn't oh, have, yeah. I just okay. am out of the presentation. Oh yeah. Like I'll talk forever. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> then have at it. <laughs> um, so one of the things that I'm excited about bringing to the city is with my puppets, I have a children's program that I'm in the works of creating a collaborative video, kind of like Mr. Rogers meets Pee Wee Herman, only Peoria specific with me and all my friends <laughs> and all my not friends, because it's gonna take a lot more people than just me to work on that and bring that to life. And then also I wanted to share about the sculptures. The Hug Friends is, they're, they're so cute. <laughs> I started making them in 2020 when I just wanted to play with some clay. And I made all these little creatures and they stayed raw for a while. And they just sort of represented that community, you know, and you're missing hugging people and sitting with people. I think it was easy to forget that phase of living through a global pandemic. Um, but these friends, they kind of took shape then. And then as I was prepping for my art exhibit and um, I had a show at Casa de Art in the summer, last summer. I was like, oh my gosh, I have this vision for these sculptures, these hug friends. And I started creating a whole world that they live in and painting them and, and making it a very playful extension of my artwork where it's, it's very much different than my paintings or my embroidery, but it brings in the imaginative and the playful aspect um, and then reaching children as audience because oftentimes when I am working with, with children or even adults, most people will say to me, oh, that's so nice. I don't have a creative bone in my body and I usually argue with them, <laughs> not to be argumentative, but just to remind people that we can't keep using the language that limits ourselves. So of course, you're never going to do anything creative or try it if you don't give yourself permission to try it. So that is what the messaging I would really like to be putting out into the world. And I think that it's something that comes natural to me to work with kids and I want to see what they want to create as well. So with the We Play program, I would be inviting um, high school students, other artists, families, children, neighbors, anyone who wants to create something that could go in the show definitely will be able to. And I'm, we're still in the early phases, but it's very exciting. I think I switched between the two. I have a brain that goes all over the place, as you can see by my artwork. <laughs> but if there's any other questions, I think I should maybe stop myself from talking for a few minutes. <laughs> I do not have any questions in the chat box. Okay. Well then, <laughs> uh, usually when I am watching this, <clears throat> I like to ask the first question because I know that sometimes people are afraid to unmute themselves and speak up. <laughs> so I can't do that for myself, but <laughs> I did see a question come up in the chat box, I think, or a statement. Where will the play program be? 
Hmm. WTVP. <laughs> uh, that's the big goal. Um, but it could be YouTube. It could, who knows? Who knows? I'm open to all the possibilities that can come from releasing the control of what I think it should be and letting it evolve into what it needs to be. And play is such an important part of the healing process or, you know, the, you think about what's gone on for the, you know, what we've been going through lately too. So I think that that element is so important in all ages. So I think that's a wonderful um, transition for you from the clay to the puppets. It's great. Yeah. They're really cute and magical, I think. <laughs> They'll kind of both be going on simultaneously. Um, the sculptures actually, when they all go to new homes, so they're um, quote unquote adoptable, really I'm calling it friend requesting. So whoever purchases the sculptures gets to then participate in the ongoing storytelling for the world that is the hug friend world. So they are going to stay in contact with me and each other. Some of the sculptures are friends with each other and they need to stay in contact for the next three years because at the end of the three years, there's going to be a story, um, a book written all about <laughs> their whatever transpires in the next three years. It's great. I love how the book is the next kind of aspect to it. So that's wonderful. Good. Any other questions for Jackie? Jackie, you can ask yourself a question as well or just make comments there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like that's I guess the first if question. <laughs> if I was curious, I would want to know. Um, I don't know. I hope to paint more murals. I hope to continue to explore um, ideas within our city and then expanding to the communities around us. Um, I had my first piece in a Chicago exhibition earlier this year. That was a huge um, goal that was achieved. It was very, very cool. Um, um, can I you tell us more about that piece and where, um, where the uh, group it was part of or? Yeah, I was at the Woman Made Gallery and the exhibition was curated by Jessica Bingham. And there were a few uh, Peoria artists in that show. And I'm blanking on the name of the show at the moment because moments like this, is that correct, Lori? I'm looking at you. <laughs> Lori is actually, yes, moments like this. Yes. Um, Lori is actually my coordinator. She makes sure that I uh, check my emails and um, she also helps organize uh, my events and my organization skills <laughs> because um, they, they're, I'm still learning. <laughs> I'm still learning. But that piece was based on a poem and an earlier piece. So it kind of collaborated all of my mediums. Um, and I, well, there was a picture of it at the very end of one of the videos. But is that exhibition still up at the Women Me Gallery? It is not. That was, okay. it's, it's been a very busy couple of months. I had, I think it was in August. Um, August, we, I delivered it. My niece was born. Um, yeah, I think it was August, August or September. And then my show at the library was in October. And now here it is November and I'm talking to you guys. <laughs> and then the show that's at the library is that, um, how, how long will that be up? It's down. It's down. <laughs> we took it down uh, last week before my birthday. Right now, it's the 22 VA show that is there at the library. 
Okay. So currently my work is not on display in a gallery at the moment, but you can see um, some of my art at the spot coffee. I also sell earrings there. I have some embroidery at Relics, the gift shop, hoping to get my website. Uh, Lori and I are coordinating some of the art pieces to go on the website. And then North Art Studios is having a open house on the 4th of December. So okay. that's the next event where you could see my work in person. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. I'm looking forward to that event. So. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Be nice to see it. Okay, any other comments or questions for Jackie? Okay, Jackie, I don't want to cut you off again. So if you have any other things to add, let me know. But I appreciate your time. This was um, a wonderful story that you um, told for us. And I appreciate this and everyone joining. So and looking forward to your event on December 4th. And um, so I wanted to let everyone know that this recording will be available on um, YouTube within the next couple of days. So make sure you can share it from there and um, be sure to tune in next month, um, December 14th on Tuesday at 1 p.m. And we're going to host Bethany Carlson Coffin for a special presentation of their artwork. I also wanted to give thanks to the museum members and Visionary Society members for your continued support, making our virtual programming possible. And so I wanted to say thank you everyone and until next time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.